I am going to call to order this meeting of the Region 12 uh, Board of Education. Um, it is 7.02 and a half. Um, I'll ask our secretary, uh, Stephanie Kolnick, to determine whether we have a quorum. Um, Joe Abdella? Here. John Bonito? Greg Cava? Here. Victoria Salen? Here. Stephanie Kolnick, I'm here. Angela Machiarulo? Alex McNaughton? Here. Justin Ongley? Here. Jen Pody? Here. Jane Sargent? Here. Pete Tagley? Mary Weber? Not here. We do have a quorum, but we're 10 out of 12. Okay, very good. We have a quorum. We're ready to go forward with the meeting. Uh, the next item on our agenda is public comment on agenda items. If any member of the public would like to make a comment on any matter that is on tonight's agenda, please go to the podium. How are you doing? My name is Joshua Coyne. I live in uh, 28 Finley Road, New Preston, Connecticut. I'm actually here to show my children the people that will not allow them to go to school. So I have a daughter. She's nine years old. Her name is Jane. She goes to the elementary school. And she enjoys a religious exemption on vaccines. And uh, I figure I'd show the other three what they're missing. I'm not really sure what's on the agenda, but I just wanted to thank you guys for showing me and giving me you know, a valuable lesson into how the world doesn't treat people fairly. And you guys have given me an opportunity to show that to my children, this disparaged treatment amongst my siblings. It's actually been a real opportunity. It's been hard. You know, you see the mother's not here and I'm here with four kids. You know, it's been real rough, but this is how we change things to our children. And I just want to thank all of you people for the policies that you guys support. You know what I'm saying? Because it makes people like us stronger, especially this one right here. But I just want to thank you guys and I appreciate it. I know you guys have the best of hearts. You know, I, I truly do. I do believe you guys care about children in Connecticut. That's why I came up here from a great state of Florida because I love the schools. <laughs> Can't even use them. It's hilarious. You know, but I definitely appreciate the opportunity to make my my family strong because this is something that actually happened to me when I was a child, and uh, you guys really opened up my eyes coming to this place. Now I'm not leaving this state. I might keep my property. I might have to go somewhere to educate my children. I'm not leaving. It's my kid's house. My kid's home. It's my kids. It's your kids. It's yours. It's your future. Don't run from it. Don't run. Don't be cowards. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mr. Coyne. Um, you have made reference that could confuse people. The, the, the requirement for children to be vaccinated to go to the school, public schools in Connecticut, is a state law. If you have a dispute, it is not with Region 12. It is with the, it's with the legislature because the state law requires it. And when they ended religious exemptions, that's why you have one child in the system and the others aren't in the system. And I'm, no, I'm sorry. We're not going to have a debate, sir. We're not going to have a debate. Sir, I'm going to ask you to please stop or I will. Well, if you'd like to be escorted out, that'll be next. So please stop talking. Thank you. We're going to move on. Is there anyone else who has a comment on the agenda? Yeah. I seeing no other public comments on the agenda. We will move on to one of the great things, which is to honor our student athletes. But let's wait a few minutes until... I'm going to recognize our athletic director, Mr. Faraci. Thank you very much. The fall athletic season was one of the best in recent memory for our varsity teams. And on behalf of the Chicago Athletic Department, I'd like to thank the Board of Education for taking the time to recognize our three Berkshire League championship teams. 
Our coaches did a tremendous job this year preparing our student athletes for competition. And without their leadership, our teams would not have been able to accomplish all that they did. I would like to publicly thank and co congratulate golf coach Chris Dennis, field hockey coaches Owen Moore and Heather Hurley, and boys soccer coaches Jim Stinson and Dave Fluke for all that they did to help provide our student athletes opportunities to succeed this year. So thank you to those coaches. As much as those coaches did this past season, and they did a lot, I would be remiss if I did not thank and congratulate the athletes themselves, and in particular, their parents. If a team is going to compete for and win a championship, it's a collective effort. And a main part of that effort is a family's dedication to providing off-season opportunities for their sons and daughters. Simply put, if kids don't compete in sports during the off-season, it's very difficult for our teams to maximize their potential. All of our teams that are here tonight had many players that worked hard in the off season. And it was that work that helped their teams rise to the top. Another important point to remember is that many of the student athletes here tonight excel not only during the fall season, but in the winter and spring seasons as well. Athletes that participate in two or three sports for Chapog who somehow find the time to work on their skills during the off season really are the cornerstone of our program. And to do this while engaged in a challenging academic program makes these accomplishments even more impressive. So a special thank you goes to our student athletes for working hard 12 months a year to make Chapog's program a success and to their parents for dedicating their entire family to help make it all possible. So thanks to the athletes and thank you to the parents. We very much appreciate it. The first team I'd like to introduce and recognize is the golf team. The Chapaw golf team finished the regular season with a Berkshire League record of 11 wins and one loss, capturing the Berkshire League title as co-champions with Litchfield High School. At the Berkshire League tournament, Chapaw earned three of the five all-star positions. We had one of our golfers win tournament medalist for non-golfers. That is the best score of the tournament. And another of our members won the closest to the pin award and Chapog won the overall team tournament. It's now my pleasure to introduce our Chapog golf coach, Mr. Chris Dennis. Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'll be brief. My uh, remarks aren't written down, which maybe makes some of them nervous. They think I won't stop talking once I start, but I will be brief. I know our, our two players here who are going to speak on behalf have lots of great things to say. First thing I want to do is thank the Board of Ed for hosting this night for our kids. They deserve it. And I want to congratulate and echo Mr. Prachi's sentiments for our field hockey and soccer teams on such a successful season. Um, I've, I've often said to parents and to our students, or not, I've said to students that you don't, sometimes you don't really know what you have until you go somewhere else. We have an incredibly supportive community, an incredibly supportive board. Um, community members, families, and uh, two golf courses that treat us so well at Lake Warmaw Country Club and Washington Golf Club. We have two outstanding uh, memberships there that embrace us. That is not the case at other schools. And uh, we're just so fortunate and our success is a byproduct of um, the, the support we have across the board. So I deeply appreciate that. And um, I, I'd like to uh, just thank everybody for the success we've had. And it's due, our success is due to that support. Um, you know, a few years ago, we uh, were a program because we had enough kids. We had fun, um, but we became competitive largely because of the dedication that uh, the, the athletes we have tonight and those who couldn't be with us uh, displayed. Uh, they are dedicated. They are committed to success. And um, I just had so much fun being around them. And it's a pleasure for me to, to be able to do that. Um, we don't have captains. Um, if we had captains, it would have been a bit insincere you know they they build off of each other and they're leaders in their own right um so i do have two two two, uh, two athletes here who will speak briefly um and i'm sure you'll appreciate what they have to say our, our lead person will be gavin Jarrell. Good evening. First, I want to congratulate field hockey, soccer, and golf for winning each sport's virtually title. 
Playing on the golf team the last three years has been the most fun I've had on the sports team. I couldn't ask for a better group of guys to spend that time with. This year, we send off Jared and Emmett, who have made the team welcoming and fun. You'll miss them greatly. We could not have had the success without the support of the Washington Golf Club and the Lake Mormont Country Club. So special thanks to Corey Harris and Michael Brady. I also want to thank Coach Dennis for all that he has done for the golf team. We truly appreciate it. He has kept us in check throughout the whole season while also keeping us loose with his countless jokes. My favorite moment from the season was when our hard work finally paid off and we were able to beat the Litchfield golf team at the Washington Golf Club, the tie for the Berkshire League title. And finally, a big thank you to the Spartan community members for the continued support. Good evening, all. Again, I would like to congratulate uh, the winning teams this fall and thank the board for honoring our successes. Um, also, to Coach Moore, who designed those hoodies for us. Um, being a student athlete, especially here at Chapog, means um, a lot here. Uh, community in school and out of school uh, plays a big role in that. Um, community is always watching us in the paper and showing up to, to cheer on events. Um, I think it's pretty cool to be a part of that as a student athlete and just around and in our community. Now, being a student athlete also means we have some history to live up to. Yes, Dennis. That's why it's been an incredible experience these past two years and not only to be being successful, but to mark our names in Chapog's records and experience this support from our community. At the club, we had numerous members cheering us throughout the entire year. I'm sure myself, for myself and my teammates that fueled our ambitions to win. Words cannot explain the last two years, memories, fun, smiles, hugs, celebration, celebrations, McDonald's visits, and most importantly, the lessons learned. Coach Dennis played a role in our success in these lessons. Thus, I cannot let that go unnoticed. His will to win, in addition to his constant moral support through each of our ups and downs, is an incredible attribute he has as a coach. He'll always give you a smile if you chunk a five iron or duff a chip. Golf is a game where you must move on from failure and work to be better. Coach Dennis taught myself and our team this, not only for golf, but for life. He preached it. Dennis has also played an incredible role on my character in and out of the classroom. And that also goes for Miles, Gav, and Jer, and, and Wyatt. Ethan, too. A great role, a great role model, full of passion, leadership, and in general, an amazing coach. I will never forget the this fall, nor the previous two. Thank you for your time. And as Coach Dennis would say, tighten up, boys. We'll see you in the spring. Under the direction of our first year coaching tandem of varsity coach Owen Moore and assistant coach Heather Hurley, the Chippewa field hockey team made a huge improvement from the previous year. After fish finishing the 2022 season with a record of eight wins and eight losses, Despite playing an even more challenging schedule in 2023, the team finished a regular season with a 14-2 record and in the process won the Berkshire League Championship. The Berkshire League coaches recognized two of the players as first-team Berkshire League All-Stars, and the Connecticut High School Coaches Association also recognized those same two players as first-team All-State. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Chapog's varsity field hockey coach, Owen Moore. Good evening. Uh, before I say a few words about the team and our season, I'd like to thank the Board of Education and the administration for recognizing our Berkshire League champions this evening. And I'd like to congratulate golf and boys soccer on their championships. I know it means a lot to our student athletes. I'd also like to thank my assistant coach, Heather Hurley, for her commitment to the sport and the team this season. I could not have done without her support. Uh, it is an honor and a privilege to work with this team and this program. The long-standing tradition of Chapog field hockey is something truly special. 
And this group embraced and believed in their ability to bring that high level of field hockey back to Chicago. This team is a special group and bought in from day one. They made it their mission this season to become Berkshire League champions for the first time in 21 years. They wanted it, they worked for it, and they earned it. This team raised the bar and set high expectations for themselves and their teammates to create a culture that fostered competitiveness, team camaraderie, and accountability. Watching them transform throughout this season um, from their level of play, confidence, and increased hockey IQ is a true joy. The team finished the regular season with a 14 and two record overall and an 11 and one record in the Berkshire league. They scored 47 goals and only allowed nine goals against. They also earned 151 penalty corners for the season. They earned the third seed in the CIAC class of state tournament and unfortunately came up short to Stafford 2-1 in the first round. Our season ended a lot earlier than we had hoped and we believed that we could reach the state semifinal or final. With that being said, as I have said to the team a lot this season, one moment, one play, one game does not define their season. This team's defining moment this season was wanting better for themselves and their teammates. They were able to change a mindset, create a strong group intention, and put Chicago Field Hockey on the map. We can't wait to see what they do next season and for seasons to come. I'd now like to introduce Captain Peyton Ongley to say a few words. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, like my past um, friends have said, I want to congratulate the boys soccer team and the golf team for their victories in this championship. It's, it's truly an honor to celebrate together. Thank you to the board for your recognition and support during our unforgettable season. Thank you to our incredible coaches, Owen Moore, Heather Hurley, and Jay Stewart for your infectious love for the game. A special thank you to our role models, Joan Gauthier and Megan Henry, for their passion and commitment to our team. Finally, I want to thank my teammates who I'm lucky enough to call my best friends. You guys are once in a lifetime. Growing alongside you has been the most rewarding part of the season, and I can assure the board that it will not be another 20 years until our next Berkshire League Championship. Thank you. Under the direction of varsity coach Jim Stinson and assistant coach Dave Fluke, the Chapard boys soccer team had their best season in over two decades. With a 14-2 regular season record, the Spartans won the Berkshire League Championship, earned the number one ranking, and earned the number one ranking in the Berkshire League Tournament. They stormed through the Berkshire League Tournament with two lopsided victories and claimed the Berkshire League Tournament Championship to go along with a regular season title. Their regular season, their successful regular season, provided them with a number two ranking in the CIAC Class S State Tournament. And after a first round bye, the Spartans rattled off three impressive victories in a row. Their tournament performance put them in a state championship game for the first time since 1965, when Chipog didn't even exist yet and we were known as Washington High School. The team's run to the state championship game was great for the Region 12 community, as many past and present Spartans, from current students and families to alumni, and even multiple members of the 1965 state championship team were in attendance at Trinity Health Stadium to watch the team in action. We also had three players recognized by Berkshire League coaches as first-team All-Stars, and two of those players were also recognized as first-team All-State. At this time, I'd like to introduce Chapog's varsity soccer coach, Mr. Jim Stinson. Good evening and congrats to all you guys. So um, one of my favorite quotes comes from the movie Cool Runnings. And there's a scene there and it says, a gold medal is a wonderful thing. But if you're not enough with it or with, if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. So um, I'm embarrassed to say it maybe took me a little bit longer than necessary for me to fully understand that quote, but I get it now. And my boys are definitely enough without it. So what I wanted to do was just list the accomplishments because my boys, true to their nature, never really looked at the big picture. And I'm not even sure Coach Flood saw the whole big picture either because when I sat down and wrote what we did, I was stunned. And here it is. We scored 86 goals. We only allowed 25. We had 12 different goal scorers on the team. 
We had three Berkshire League All-Star first team members, two Berkshire League All-Star second team members, six honorable mentions. So if you're counting, that's my entire starting lineup was on. Okay. Two All-State selections, Berkshire League Coach of the Year, Berkshire League Leading Scorer, the first Berkshire League title since 2001, the first outright Chapag only Berkshire League title since 1993, uh, the first Berkshire League tournament title, second place in Class S, and most importantly, the Art Ham Western Connecticut Soccer Official Sportsmanship Award. We also have 29 out of 35 team members currently competing in winter sports for Chapag. We are very grateful for all of the support that we received this season, and I know that I speak for the boys when I say that I cannot wait for the ball game. With that, I'd like to introduce our team captain, Roman Team. Good evening. I'd like to thank the board of ed for having us here. Uh, my name is Ronan Feenan, and I have the privilege of being the Chapag Valley Boys Soccer team captain this season. We had an awesome season with a lot of firsts. We won the Virtual League title, Virtual League tournament. Um, Chipot the first ever Chapag Boys Soccer team to make it to the state's final with the most ever wins in Chapag Boys Soccer history with 19 wins. Every player worked hard and we came together as a team to accomplish all of this. Coach Stinson and Coach Fluke, thank you for not only teaching us the skills of the game, but also instilling in us the values of discipline with those hundreds of push-ups and sprints, perseverance, teamwork. Your mentorship has shaped us into better athletes and better individuals. We are forever grateful for your tireless dedication and countless hours spent in helping us to improve. I'd like to thank every member of the team for giving us seniors such a memorable year. And Coach Stinson, we're ready for a full day. Just once again, in closing, I would like to thank the coaches for the job that they did this year with student athletes who did a great job of dedicating themselves. We'd also like to thank the parents because we all know that without parents who have dedicated themselves to the Chapag athletic program, we wouldn't have the success that we've had. So we'd like to thank the board of ed, uh, thank the coaches and the parents, and that's it for me. Thanks. Yeah, we are. Thank you very much, uh, Matt, Mr. We really appreciate it. I just want to say something. There is no way a school of this size should have one team that goes all the way, much less than three in one season in the fall. I don't know how you did it, but uh, and you did it not just, you didn't just win. You won and then you exhibited levels of sportsmanship that are rarely seen certainly not seen necessarily at the professional level. We are so impressed. We are so proud of you. Thank you so much because you've done a lot to make this school a special place. And we really can Now, we've got a few goodies over here that are prepared by our Ag Science Food people. And so please, let's take a short recess and uh, say hi. We are gonna move on to the next item on the agenda, which is a uh, developmental relationship survey, Bridgewater, Roxbury, Washington Prevention Council. And I'm gonna introduce Mr. Frock. Thanks everyone for welcoming the Prevention Council of Bridgewater, Roxbury, and Washington. Uh, here, I am, I don't know if is member the right word. I go to the meetings. Is that, we're going we're gonna to say member. Um, and we've got uh, other members here. Thanks so much to, uh, to them and to the others who can't be here for their work on behalf of our students. Uh, I want to tell you a little story and it goes back to uh, early 2020 when you all or your predecessors approved a survey to be administered by uh, our school in cooperation with the Prevention Council 
Uh, the survey was another search institute instrument, I believe the developmental assets survey um, before we could administer, before the school and the prevention council could administer the survey, uh, the schools were shut down, folks were, were sent home and the survey was never administered, okay? And so what we're asking for tonight is approval from the Board of Education for the uh, administration of a different but similar uh, survey instrument by the same organization, the Search Institute. And the idea is that the information gleaned from the student responses will help both the Prevention Council and the school to move towards its mission, which is supporting the healthy development of our young people. The Prevention Council's um, focus includes an emphasis on uh, preventing vaping, and that is uh, tied to one of their grants, but they also have a holistic view uh, with regard to supporting the development of our children. I should have said earlier that I am a, an emergency backup uh, face of the Prevention Council tonight. Uh, Emma Hollis, who um, has great expertise in these instruments, and is a member of the Prevention Council, uh, was unexpectedly unable to be here tonight. And uh, so I or we will be able to, I think, answer basic questions, but if there are anything beyond basic questions, that's okay, and that's a good thing, that's your job. Uh, but we might defer the topic uh, to when our, our member who's a little more expert can be here. So um, the short story is that uh, the school and the Prevention Council are seeking the approval of the developmental relationship survey by the Search Institute for the purpose of uh, gathering information to drive the schools and the Prevention Council's work in supporting our youth. Have any questions? Um, this, the inform is, I understand there's questionnaires that are given to both the teachers and the students. Is that correct? That's not my understanding. My understanding is that, uh, the survey goes to the students, but I, I could be wrong. Okay. And what safeguards are there on this? Are, are they anonymous or are they signed or how, how does that work? No, they're, they're totally anonymous. They're, uh, conducted electronically and all, the only information that's provided is in aggregate. I've worked in another district with uh, uh, the uh, Search Institute's data and what you get is a readout of the aggregated data, uh, the, the total responses. Um, they can be split out by grade, they can be split out by gender, uh, but you don't see anything close to anything like an individual level. So uh, any student's information can't compromise them? Impossible. In my experience, and uh, I believe in the literature, uh, but certainly in my experience, it'd be impossible to discern that. Thank you. Uh, Mike, what it, what it looks like is that uh, the focus here is on a number of areas that would align very nicely with the kind of things we expect from, from kids. I mean, we, we talk about uh, the, the first area in core measure number one, it talks about uh, being able to, you know, to know that you need to do your best and to um, and to have you know, um, uh, you know, seek out you know the, the positions of being a leader and doing things that interest me and just starting doing that. In your core measures number two, it talks about relating to other people, truth telling, uh, making relationships, making friends. In core measures number three, it talks about how you treat other people. And, and, and you treat them in good ways. Um, I would imagine that at the end of the day, the purpose of the survey is to help us find areas where we're not permitting this growth, where we're, where we're not as successful as we'd like this growth, or, is that, or am I wrong on that? Do I misunderstand? No, I think that's exactly it. Um, it's a cultural measure, and you can look at the samples. I think you have this document in front of you, and if you don't, I can help you get it. Um, I think it was, it says uh, developmental relationship survey sample core measures. You can look at those um, items 
And you can imagine the kind of response that a school or a prevention council would plan if the answers were um, not what we'd hope for, not what we'd ex we would expect. So yes, I think that's exactly it. Okay. John, and then <clears throat> Stephanie. So once the uh, Search Institute compiles the uh, responses, how are they acted upon? How are they implemented? How are they addressed throughout the um, school climate? So uh, I'd say a couple of things about that. One is that there's the Prevention Council's uh, examination of the information. There's the School Climate Committee's examination of the information. And I, I think that uh, the best answer is that it would depend on the area of need that was presented, right? So if, if we were to see, for example, um, if I have a problem, I know that my teachers will help me. I see that that's something that is low, then there's a particular response in that area. If we were to see I'm good at making friends, many students answering strongly disagree, then there's a response uh, that maybe, you know, is different, right? Includes the counseling department a little bit more. So um, the two primary groups who would do that examination, do that action planning would be the prevention council itself and the uh, school climate committee here at Chicago. Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that partially answered my question. Um, but more specifically, is this six through twelve or is this nine through twelve? We're asking for six through twelve. The the survey is designed for grades four to twelve, uh, and, and we're asking for uh, approval to administer with administer with each grade. Other and questions? Specifically, I, I should I think be more specific. Um, what we're aiming for is uh, options one and two. Uh, in, in core measures two and three, uh, the places where there are options. So um, seems like the basic and yet comprehensive level. Okay, other questions? Uh, so what you're looking for, Mr. Croft, is for us to approve the, the serve the conducting the survey or what, what exactly? Yeah, approve the administration, the conducting of the survey, which the Prevention Council looks to do in hopefully in February. All right. Is there a motion to um, approve the, the conducting of the survey according to what Mr. Croft has outlined? So, so moved, moved and seconded. Are there further, is there further discussion? Yeah. What would be the downside? I mean, I don't, I don't see any visible downside. Is anybody to conducting the survey? Yeah, time is a precious resource. This is we've outlined twenty nine minutes. Uh, there's a, some cost to the prevention council. Uh, it's 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 minimal. The prevention council weighed a couple of different instruments. This is not the most expensive one. Um, I think that those costs are outweighed by the benefit of, of learning more about where our students are, but I, those are two of the costs I can think of. Yeah, okay, thank you. John? Yeah, the answer is generate questions. Um, what is the catalyst for this? How, how did this originate? How did, how did you folks hear about it? Yes. Other questions? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstaining? It appears to be unanimous, 10 to nothing. 
Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for all your work. Um, the next item on the agenda, E, is um, presentation on Chapag Valley School Culture Plan. Uh, I had a discussion with uh, Dr. Shells, who's going to present that, and it would benefit from a little bit more time. So we're not going to take that. We're going to take that off this evening's agenda, and we will take it up probably at our January meeting. Um, we have the consent agenda next. Uh, there are minutes of the Board of Ed meeting of November 20, 2023. Does anyone wish to take that off the consent agenda for discussion, amendments, or action otherwise? All right. Hearing nothing, those minutes will be uh, deemed adopted. We'll move on now to reports and recognition. Um, the board chairperson's report, uh, there are two things on my list for tonight. I want to mention that the Chapag Bazaar is going to be Wednesday night. This is in two nights uh, time. It's from 6 to 8.30. And the Ag Science uh, Department is conducting a holiday sale of trees, wreaths, and other decorations and things. Please come. Please support your, your school. Talk to everybody in the world and let them know that this is where you want to go. Although I'm told that because I didn't sign up for pre-ordering, my selection might be diminished. Um, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, okay, so that, that's coming up on Wednesday, 6 to 8.30. Let's make sure we come. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention is that uh, our superintendent, Dr. Mark Gosselin, has indicated that he'll be taking some time off for personal reasons. And during his absence, Dr. Lori Rodrigue has been designated to act in his place. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the, 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 so we won't have a superintendent's report. Um, but what I do have uh, are, are two resignations to mention. Um, uh, one of them is uh, Stacy Skipko, building substitute at Washington Primary School, effective November 21, 2023. And most regrettably, Mike Nolan, a world language teacher at Chapaw Valley School, effective December 22nd, 2023. Mike has been here since my kids were in school. And so this is, uh, I, I would entertain a motion to accept with great, um, yeah, I've blanked on that. No, it's not trepidation. It's, it's, it's um, with, I don't know, great reluctance, you know, what have you that we, we regrettably accept his, his resignation. Is there a motion so made? I'm gonna make that motion. Is there a second? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, abstaining, we will miss him. Okay, treasurer's report, Alex. Okay, my uh, treasurer's report and uh... FNO uh, meeting reports tend to overlap. Uh, the one thing that I will report is that uh, uh, due to uh, Connecticut law, we are going to put out an, F, an RFP for our HVAC uh, to assess the situation, not to do, actually do the work, but to assess it. This needs to be done by January of 25, but uh, we're going to get a a, a little head start on it. Uh, the problem is that since there's so many schools and only so many companies that do this, uh, you have to get in line so that you can uh, uh, get the work done in, in a timely manner. Um, I'm going to save the rest of my financial discussions for the FNO report. Okay. Very good. Uh, at advance, Joe. I currently do not have anything new. I was not able to attend the November 2nd meeting, and they have uh, canceled the December meeting because it starts, or it's the start of Hanukkah. So that's all I have. Okay. FNO, Alex? Okay, I'm back again. Um, tonight, uh, we just had an FNO meeting at 5.30 this afternoon, so I have not really collected my thoughts well. Uh, Nicole has is, is been hard at work, and, and we're starting the process now. 
Uh, she has drawn up a timeline, which will give everybody plenty of time to ask questions, put input into the budget process, and uh, make comments. Um, the one of the drivers on the budget for next year is going to be obviously personnel. It's our largest uh, uh, category, and uh, uh, a couple of other things are, are, you know, our propane has always been an issue. But Nicole was fortunate enough to get the lock-in numbers, even though they're going to be a little bit higher. The uh, the heating oil numbers should be a little bit lower, and those should cancel out. Um, we currently have 22 uh 22 left on our budget um now that is somewhat misleading because uh uh money has been set aside uh, in, in different areas where it's been encumbered where we know that they we're going to have the expense but as a comparison last year it was just under 27 percent at this time so uh we're the budget's going to be tight this year and uh uh, hopefully we'll come in in a, a number that will allow us to still have that 2% to, to sock away for, uh, for emergencies. And, uh, on the, the operation side of it, uh, uh, Don presented us with a preliminary list of, uh, projects that he would like to see done. Uh, Nicole has not vetted them yet. Uh, we did look at last year's numbers, and uh, it appears that we made some serious headway um, uh, in this current school year. And that is about it for me. Okay. Thank you very much. I would entertain questions. Already. I don't hear any. I think you're off the hook. All right. That's it for committee reports. Uh, the first, uh, the only action item we have are 11 items, which are the um, policies that we approved for a first reading last time. In order to move things along, is there anyone here who would object, who wants to take up a specific policy for discussion, who wants to object to approving them for a motion to approve them for a second reading en masse? So it would approve all 11 of these policies including the last one, which is gifted and talented students, which is a new policy. The rest are amendments to existing policies. Does anyone have a problem with doing all 11 at once? All right. In that case, I will entertain a motion to approve for a second reading policies um, 1201, 2500 4118.4, 5113, 5141.23, 6141.321, 6144.1, 6172.6, and the new policy yet to be numbered for um, equitable identification of gifted and talented students. Is there such a motion? Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Please keep it up so Stephanie can count them. All those opposed, all those abstained. I think it's unanimous. Yeah, John. How many more remaining? Uh, several hundred. Uh, we, I, I don't know how many they've actually amended, but we're going to try to go through all the amended policies and approve those. And if there are new policies, we'll try to, you know, have some edifying instruction on them. But so, on the site, the the policy is under construction. Will that continue until all those policies are adopted, or uh, until all of the ones they made changes to? Most of the changes are resulting from law change, changes in the law. Yeah. Um, there's rarely when we re rethink something, um, but uh, I, I believe that all the policies are up every year for review in case there are changes. And we're just going to put up the ones that have changed. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to fix the, uh, the the bylaws. That's still on my list. I haven't forgotten about that. We're going to make that compliant. So. I hope that's at our next policy meeting. We're supposed to have a policy meeting later this month. Um, 
next Monday. I'm not 100 percent sure that's going to happen, but we'll talk. We're ready. We'll do it. If not, um, we'll have to look. Okay. Well, I, we've approved all of those. So now we have new business and updates. There, there's one item on the agenda, and that is to consider, if appropriate, approve the field trip request to the Model United Nations Conference in Boston on January 25th and 28th of 2024, which is affecting children in grades nine through 12. Um, I don't think we have a presentation on this, but we've approved this year after year after year, and they've done a wonderful job. It's a great experience, and you know you can't be going to Boston uh, in the midst of a college school year with a lot of kids around in the city. So, um, does anyone like to make a motion to approve? Moved. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Say aye. Aye. All those opposed. All those abstaining. I see that as ten nothing. Nothing. Okay, I'd like to ask if we could have a motion to add under new business another item to the agenda to consider, if appropriate, approve the field trip request to the Pennsylvania Farm Show in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and Lancaster County, Pennsylvania on January 12th to 13, 2024. This involved grades 9 to 12 ag science students. And we have a presentation on that. Do I have a motion to add it to the agenda? Is there a second? All those in favor of adding it to the agenda, please say aye. All those opposed, say nay. All those abstaining. Okay, so now it's on the agenda, and I will ask um, Megan Davenport to make to tell us what this is about. It obviously came up just recently. science uh, teachers that was recently hired. Uh, this opportunity was presented to me literally last night. So I do apologize for the uh, quick turnaround. I didn't realize you guys weren't meeting again this month and this is kind of an urgent uh, request, uh, but this is a really cool field trip opportunity. It's run by UConn 4-H. So Litchfield County 4-H uh, office is sending a few dozen students of 4-H uh, students uh, in the state of Connecticut. Actually, I think one or two of our Chapag Agri-Science students are going through 4-H. And so they had a few uh, seats on the bus left over and they reached out to see if we'd be entertaining the idea of having our students join them on this field trip. It's basically a two day field trip. You drive up to uh, Pennsylvania Farm Show, which is really cool. Uh, again, Big E is kind of the best or the closest we get to large like state fairs in New England. So the Pennsylvania Farm Show is kind of the next biggest uh, agricultural fair, and there's a lot of different vendors, a variety of species of animals that are being shown, a variety of other agricultural exhibits, very educational and a really cool opportunity. On the way, we also get to stop at Turkey Hill, which is a relatively larger ice cream brand in Pennsylvania, uh, to do a really cool food science workshop where kids get to make their own ice cream flavors and learn about flavor additives and kind of the science behind uh, dairy food product processing. Uh, so I'm really passionate about this uh, field trip opportunity, mostly because I've gone on it as a student myself. I was involved in 4-H for probably 10, 12 years. I've done this field trip two or three times myself, and I absolutely look forward to it every year. It was a very, uh, really cool opportunity. It's, I honestly credit it for me developing my interest in food science and animal science, which is what I'm teaching here. Uh, and so once the opportunity was presented to me, I couldn't really pass it up. And I appreciate the board taking this under consideration. Uh, I, I believe we'll have a large amount of students who'd be interested in this. Uh, all the details are as followed on that piece of paper. Again, it's mostly planned and coordinated through UConn 4 H. So we're kind of just piggybacking on their field trip. So logistically, it's a lot less of a headache on our end. Um, are there any specific questions? Uh, I noticed there's a cost associated with it. How's that going to be taken care of? So each student would be responsible for the cost themselves. Um, similar to sometimes the National FFA Convention, students will have to put the bill for that since it's a larger, more expensive um, convention. Uh, again, we're very upfront with the cost and we'll make sure that students are aware that it would be on their end and their responsibility. I still believe we'd have a decent amount of interest for students to go, especially because um, considering all the stuff that they're doing, I think it's pretty reasonably priced for the hotel, the farm show, the food science, ice cream workshop, and the bus as well. Yeah, it's a couple hundred dollars a kid, if I'm not mistaken, for the whole the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I mean, this is one reason why we really need a foundation. We really need to be able to raise money to add these enrichment activities to help with the cost of them. Um, and, but I think if, they're, if, they're, if students are willing to pay this, I think it's important. But I, I, it, the, what comes from these events is to, is to ramp them up to a higher level of understanding what they're learning and understanding their program and excitement for it. So I think it's a great idea. I'm all for it. Yes, Pete. these things to get the kids you know to get the kids excited and not having to dip into their own accounts you know the parent brands well it's one reason why we wanted to form something that a lot of private schools have which is a foundation that would allow us to help raise money uh in our communities and elsewhere in order to be able to provide money for enrichment like this okay uh so it would burden the taxpayers less but the idea would be that if it if that fails, then we really need to consider whether or not, you know, in any given year, uh, this is something we want to fund. I, I think it's I think it's worthwhile. And it's not just this. The problem is it doesn't stop with ag science. Uh, I mean, you know, one could argue that we should make available the opportunities for kids in the astronomy program to go to space camp in Huntsville, Alabama, that NASA runs. Similarly, with our broadcasters, there have got to be opportunities for enrichment. There's programs throughout the school where enrichment would help. Uh, music, arts. I, I mean, I cannot tell you how much my daughter got out of going to summer arts programs when she was in middle school and high school. And, uh, and, and she came back here all charged up and ready to go. And I've seen that time after time. I go to events myself in my career, and you come back charged up with new knowledge and new ideas. These things are tremendous. Well, maybe and, what... and we need to figure out a way to make it more affordable for kids. And that means we need to find a way to subsidize it. And that's why I'm excited about the prospect of the foundation. So then you're going to propose a way to do this when we get our upcoming budget? Uh, well, I don't know how soon we're going to do it. We're working on it. It's in the works. It's been discussed. Some initial steps have been taken. But I don't think we're quite there yet. But this is a direction we need to go in if we want to have a rich program for kids. Is we need to be able to figure out how to fund it. Uh, Vicki and then Alex. Um, yes, I have a couple of questions. Um, number one, where does the money go from like the bazaar that we're having this week that you guys are raising money? Uh, does it go to the students? Uh, so all of our FFA fundraisers go towards our big FFA accounts, which are used to fund all of our FFA events that students will engage in, whether it's after school events or, um, for example, uh, during the week of Halloween, we had a celebrating National Convention Week where we had a bunch of in school workshops during the Spartan period. Thankfully, the alumni helped uh, pay for that one. But as for all the other after school activities like the pumpkin carving social, we have an FFA movie coming up, uh, money to send students to a district social to go bowling, et cetera. Um, anytime we have some cost, a lot of our leadership workshops at the state level, there's a registration cost. So our FFA covers most of those as much as it can. Our goal is to fundraise more and more money every year to again, subsidize that for students. We're just a baby program, brand new. So we're slowly accumulating that, those strong fundraisers yearly. So we're hoping at the bazaar, we make a lot of money to again, bring back and give these opportunities to the students. Right, and then, uh, thank you. And one other question, um, how many students are planning on attending this two day field trip? So again, we have the ability to up to 20 to 25 individuals, including a few chaperones. And I would volunteer myself as a teacher uh, affiliated with this. Again, I have not, I really kind of came here just to get the approval of this as an opportunity and then it would gauge interest. I know for a fact, a lot of my students have been hounding me about field trips lately. And I have a feeling that we'd have a lot of uh, students, especially in the animal science and food science pathways who'd be interested in this. So I, I don't believe we'd have an issue getting kids to participate. I think we might have an issue with kids fighting over spots, but hopefully that would open up new opportunities to do, again, other types of field trips like this to spread the wealth and share the wealth between, you know, nine through 12 uh, and students of all pathways. But this is kind of just putting our foot in the door in terms of out of state uh, field trips, again, educational and also really rewarding in many different ways. But the goal is to do more of these. And I, I again, don't feel like we're going to have issues trying to fill those spots. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? No, I was going to say, Ms. Davenport, please don't think we're not 100,000% behind this. It's just that we want to find ways to make it easier 
Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Me too. I mean, so this is an opportunity for us to vent about the, our desire to, to make enrichment more a part of Chapag. So thank you much. Our, if there's no any, anything else, I think we should move on to a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstaining? That's unanimous. You're you're good to go. Thank you very much. And I assume you will have covered everything else you need to cover, insurance and other things to deal with this. So. Yeah, I'll make sure we we dot the I's, cross the T's, do everything we need to do. Again, the nice thing is that UConn 4 is doing most of this. So again, it's a legitimate organization. It's our land-grant university. It's very cut and dry with legitimacy. And then we'll make sure on our end that our students are covered and have the appropriate amount of time to plan accordingly, et cetera. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Oh, by the way, the food tonight was amazing. This came from our our our, our ag science like food. To pass on to my students, they worked very hard today. What was your favorite? Any uh, takers? The thumbprint cookies. I had the kids choose the recipes, so I guess I'll have to reward that group with candy because that was the the most liked one. <laughs> well, there was something in a little container that was very very creamy. The little cheesecake thing. Yes, the little cheesecake. Of phenomenal. I'll tell them that you guys like them. All. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I was I was recommended to me, and it was really good. So please thank them. We'll I mean, it was sure. extraordinary. They'll they'll feel really good that you guys not only approve but really like them. So they're gonna find excuses for me to do that more often. Don't well, worry. we do have meetings in January, February. <laughs> I was gonna say, um, but I'll pass along to my students. <laughs> but we, I appreciate it. Thank you very we, much. We would absolutely never turn them down. So. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much again. I appreciate it. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Davenport. Okay. Unless someone has an objection or anything else, I would consider this meeting adjourned by consent at 815. Thank you all very much.